and opinions expressed by callers, guests, and hosts do not necessarily reflect those of the Black Talk Radio Network and Black Talk Media Project. Black Talk Radio is new black media for the new millennium. Dinar would have had serious consequences for the world financial system, but may also have empowered the people of Africa, something black activists say the U.S. wants to avoid at all costs. We slicing cake. We slicing cake. We slicing cake. Say the US wants to avoid at all costs. We're slicing cake. Say the US wants to avoid at all costs. We're slicing cake. Gaddafi didn't give up. In the months leading up to the military intervention, he called on African and Muslim nations to join together to create this new currency that would rival the dollar and euro. They would sell oil and other resources around the world only for gold dinars. It's an idea that would shift the economic balance of the world. Countries' wealth would depend on how much gold they have, not how many dollars they trade. And Libya has 144 tons of gold. Welcome, welcome, everyone. It's Tando Radio Show, brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. I'm your host, Dave, from L.A., coming to you live from FEMA Region Number 6. It is a Wednesday, June the 28th, 2017. It is some of the last few days in June. Wow. Going by quickly. The sixth month of the year. Gone. Six months. Already gone, y'all. So, crazy, crazy how time is just continued. Well, not time. Just how this year is just blowing by. So, just want to say thank you all for listening to Tando Radio Show. Greatly, greatly appreciate you all, and thank you for being you. Also, before we get into today's show, you know the importance of Black Talk Radio Network, and we would ask that you will continue to support Black Talk Radio Network by going to its website, www.blacktalkradionetwork, and there the homepage you'll see on the far right-hand margin, you'll see the holding hands in green background has a green background the holding hands and if you would just click on that and that will prompt you to how you could give some of your financial energy you can make donations to this network so that it can continue to do what it's been doing and what you have come to come to uh, see the value of and you yourself say that is valuable enough that it should be something that you, you should be consuming daily so make sure that we all feed the feed the roots instead of just eating the fruit and that's very very important for a tree to continue to bear what's necessary in the nourishment of our bodies and spirits and our minds and our souls okay and our overall prosperous agenda going forward so black talk radio network is something that you should be sponsoring because no one else is going to so it is coming upon us to support it also another way that you can support black talk radio network is by going to its social media network that is established known as BTR Community. Also on the homepage for the network, BTR Black Talk Radio Network, you'll see just beneath the donation uh, prompt, you just look down and you'll see a capital B in, in with a black background. That is BTR Community established by this network so that you can engage in a holistic way of uh, the social media event, yeah, excuse me, activities without being adversely affected. What I mean by that is that most people think that the overall mainstream media ones are free, but they're not free. They are actually there for a reason to to get tabs on what who you are, what you're doing, who you know, where you're going, and everything else. It's so so much happens there. So with uh, BTR community, you don't have to worry about that, nor do you have to worry about being adversely affected, nor your identity being sold to any bidder, and that's what's happening, and, and this is why so many, so many people get all kinds of calls, solicitations, and everything else. Uh, that is definitely one of the ways that it happens, because your identity is being sold. Your, your, your number, your everything else, and don't know, you know, how this stuff happens. That's how it happens. So 
come on over to BTR Community for only $24 a year. You can engage in your social media activities without, having, without, like I said, being adversely affected. And you can post things about you, your business, things that you think are relevant, important, uh, events that you think that need to be given more exposure, people need to know about. You can do that all at BTR Community for $24 a year. It's the only place that I post. Come on in, enjoy it, um, and be a part of the family, and let's continue to make this thing grow because you'll see in the future it's going to be very, very important that you'll be happy that you have BTR uh, community because uh, what's going on in the world, it will be a place where you will get good information about things that will can, uh, affect in you that you can leverage in a positive, positive way. So definitely join BTR community. Also, if you would like to acquire real money, you can do that by going to Prosperity Mint, P-R-O-S-P-E-R-I-T-Y. M-I-N-T dot com, prosperitymint.com. Check out what's in inventory there. Check out uh, what we have there, and then go to info at Prosperity Mint email, and someone will get in contact with you uh, before you make your, your purchase uh, so someone can explain to you the overall buying process to make sure everything is, is there, and you can use PayPal, you can use uh, your your debit or or credit card. All of that can be done there. But make sure you first uh, contact uh, Prosperity Mint info at prosperitymint.com. It is for your benefit. Definitely take advantage of that. Okay, then that way you can save as a lady and a gentleman in silver or as the king or queen in gold. You, even though we're not paid in that, you can still save in that, and that will make you can accumulate it that way so that you will be the reigning the, the reigning decision maker and sovereignty swayer in the future so that your overall family, your family, yourself and your family will be able to handsomely, handsomely prosper and be paid the way that you should be paid for your labor. So that is what kings and queens do require, and that's what ladies and gentlemen require. Until we start requiring that type of thing, then we will continue to be paid as slaves. We only require what slaves get, we require what slaves get paid in, because we don't know. So definitely come on over to, I mean, go to prosperitymint.com. Okay, so July the 1st is coming around Saturday. July the 1st is coming around, and our Control Your Wealth seminar is right around the corner, a couple of days away. Looking forward to actually seeing you all there. And if uh, for those of you that are coming, make sure that you um, uh, definitely uh, reach out to me. Looking forward to, uh, and you can you can reach me at nine five, text me at nine five one seven nine zero eight three three zero. Looking forward to that. The Control Your Wealth seminar is put on by, I mean, is put on by Prosperity Mint, sp sponsored by Prosperity Mint, and you can go to the Eventbrite dot com uh, platform and just hit in Control Your Wealth seminar. For those of you that have already made your your uh, reservations, your plane reservations, hotel reservations, all of that, uh, make sure you, you got all of your tickets and you can go to Eventbrite and tickets are $300 for individual tickets and 550 for couples. You could do that there and that is something that you definitely can engage in and is going to be held at the Central Library, uh, Dallas Public Library. It's at 1515 Young Street in Dallas, Texas. It's going to be going on from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central uh, Standard Time. And looking forward to that. So definitely engage in that. Uh, for the first hour, uh, there will be an introduction by Prosperity Mint, one-hour introduction uh, by Prosperity Mint for, for some of the things that what's going on in the world, some things that can't be talked about here on air. Um, very, very powerful, powerful information you need to know. Be a part of it. Also, there's the uh, Trust and Foundation uh, will be a presentation. Legacy Wealth Management will actually give Trust and Foundations for one hour. Then we will have uh, a Prosperity Mint will sponsor um, how to obtain precious metals correctly, and that will be uh, probably one of the most important portions of the precious metals class. Uh, that will be given one hour of that, and then we will have one hour of 
looking at different opportunities that you can, other, other uh, revenue streams that you can engage in to bring in other sources of income for yourself and your family and how to leverage things going forward in the future. And we'll be a debriefing from there from the day's event. Very, very important. So come on down to Dallas if you already, if you're not, if you're in the area of Dallas, come on down to the Central Library. But make sure you uh, make uh, payment arrangements before because there will be no uh, cash exchange uh, going on there. Um, so just make sure you can go to, excuse me, you can go to Eventbrite Control Your Wealth Seminar or you can go to info at prosperitymint.com. For those of you that are not able to make it into Dallas on the 1st of July, definitely what you could do is you can engage in the online portion of it. And just for that, you need to um, info Prosperity Mint is going to be info at prosperitymint.com. Just say, hey, I would like to uh, sign up for the presentation online for Saturday, and you will definitely will be there. Um, payment for that is $300. So you could do that. Just make sure for that one you can't go through Eventbrite. Uh, you have to go through... You have to go through Prosperity Mint. Uh, you have to info at Prosperity Mint. Looking forward to it. It's going to be a great, great dynamic uh, day. A lot of information that will be given to you will be for you and for your family and our overall community. This is what is going to be beneficial to you. So, so much that's, that's going on. And so looking definitely forward to seeing uh, all of you and those of you that will be engaging online. Uh, we will see, definitely see you there. Looking forward to that as well. So that's July 1st coming up this Saturday. Um, if you can't make it to Dallas, then definitely you can go to, you can, imp, you can do the online portion of it. It will be online live. Uh, so you can do that there. And what you would do is just Inf you just have to email Prosperity Mint, info at prosperitymint.com, and it's $300 uh, for that. So definitely looking forward to this weekend. Okay, next we have, if for those of you that are into the cryptocurrencies, which everybody should be really, uh, we actually have, uh, you can go to our rcryptocurrency.com rcryptocurrency.com sign up there and you can actually start trading the cryptocurrencies um, there uh, with us and from that group uh, we will be trading individually as well but the trade coin club actually does that a portion of it for you and you definitely that's another avenue that you could definitely use and, and I'm very very pleased with it for everything that's going on exactly what the cryptocurrencies has been what they've been doing I had been anticipating to the T and been been benefiting from it greatly okay so go to www.rcryptocurrency.com and sign up there once you do that I will send you information on setting up your account and then um, get going from there. And then when you do that, definitely you can uh, text me at 951-790-8330 uh, just so I make, to make sure you, you have everything that you need. Okay, also, there is another, the GoFundMe campaign that we're doing right now is for my man, Michael Emanuel, who is a survivor of, of uh, cancer. And we are definitely, definitely moving towards uh, the overall uh, goal. Um, man, I'm so proud of you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And we're going to continue to um, raise the necessary funds. I know that uh, we are going to be sending uh, Michael uh, some of the trace minerals um, that he needs. Uh, we're definitely going to be doing that and looking forward to doing more and how you can and do this. And this is uh, Jada came on uh, Tando radio show on two on Monday on Monday and told us, uh, gave us the story of uh, Michael who was actually was diagnosed with germ uh, cell cancer, um, went through chemo in um, last month and had uh, just had his last uh, chemotherapy uh, just last uh, last week, 11, 12 days ago. So, and man, what a beautiful, beautiful, handsome young man. When you see this, he just, I mean, he just lights, lights you, lights the whole picture up. His smile is 
electric. It's, uh, he smiles with his eyes. It's amazing. So the GoFundMe campaign is just go to GoFundMe, and you can go to www.gofundme.com forward slash S-U-Y. This is all lowercase. S-U-Y. 5P-3500. The goal is $3,500, and they're doing this to ensure that Michael has the proper nutrition for his body to heal from the chemo and from the overall cancer so that they will not have another episode with that. And we are definitely moving in a good direction. I just want to thank you all so much. For those of you that are donating, plan to donate. I know you all are. And those that have, uh, amazing, amazing. Thank you all so, so much. And we're going to definitely get to the goal and get past that as well. So Michael thanks you. We thank you. And this is what we're going to be doing um, for the worthy causes that we have. So definitely looking forward to that. So continue with that. And I'm so thankful to you all i i can't even <laughs> words can't even express and sincerely sincere the key to to wealth is giving a fortune away before you ask for one give one away and we do that and i'm so proud of us and so proud of you and i thank you so so much so with that being said we're going to jump into what's in the news and some great articles. I want to thank uh, my man L.A. Ramon and Roz for posting there uh, inside of uh, Tando Radio Show's uh, page for today is Wise Wednesday. We have uh, today's topic is, is going to be Wise Wednesday with Brother Davis. Looking forward to it. So I want to jump into what's in the news so Brother Davis can get to doing what he does best, being wise on Wednesdays. Well, that's not the only thing he does. Not probably not the best, but it's it's darn sure. So darn close to it Because Brother Davis you all know Always comes with it every every Wednesday I'm pretty sure the, the there are So many things other things that Brother Davis could be doing but he shares Wise Wednesdays with us And I appreciate it so much and I know You all do because the things that We are able to 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 be introduced to And, and realign with is so 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 important, especially for where we're going and, and reclaiming our self-determination and our sovereignty. So Wise Wednesday is coming up uh, right after what's in the news. Let me make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Oh, okay, for those of you that are, are in our – right, excuse me. Those for the preparedness classes will be in our preparedness classes uh, 30 minutes after Tando Radio Show goes off, uh, so 30 minutes after the hour. And then uh, for those of you that are in the trading, uh, cryptocurrencies and trading, we will have a actual call after Tando Radio Show tomorrow, okay? We will have a conference call then. All right, so let's jump into what's in the news. Mm, what's in the news? First article I posted, this one came from RT International. And this one is for and RT International is Russia Today International. Uh, PETA, 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 uh, ransomware attack stems from NSA Snowden security uh, expert says. So that over the, the ransomware that has spread across the globe Tuesday has made it possible thanks to Inner Blue, a hacking tool used by the NSA to exploit a Windows a exploit Windows vulnerability. It only left open for five years, Eric Snowden, the security expert, has said. So definitely that and, and it expanded. You'll see it's a couple of other great articles. Rise posted one about the expansion of that. Uh so definitely check out that article. Next article I posted this one. Uh this one comes from the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System. And I said the next one is near financial instability is more like it. And this one says this is uh, a speech by the vice uh, chairman features on an assessment of financial stability in the United States. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing uh, stable about the U.S. at all. 
So this is from the Board of Governors, and it says, uh, check out this article. This is not an article. This is a publication. And it's so funny. Uh, yesterday, Janet Yellen had said that sh- she doesn't expect, and she, she doesn't expect any crisis uh, within our lifetime, any financial crisis within our lifetime. Boy, every time they say stuff like that, within two weeks, boom, there it happens. Remember when uh, Pop, uh, Banco de Popular said everything is okay, don't worry, don't worry, everything's okay, we're going to be fine, boom. It was just a week later they were done. This is how they do. Whenever they say everything is okay, if you believe them, then when it goes awry, don't be mad because you fell for the sucker punch again because they've been throwing these sucker punches for so long the only that is really is really time that we stop being becoming the suckers and i mean just of us as in the general population not anyone specifically but we need to know that if someone tells you that they've been a liar a, a cheater a thief a stealer for millenniums, when is it going to be where you're going to believe them and stop making excuses for them and realize who they truly are? Most time that we make excuses for them because we punk out. We make excuses because we punk out. Some point, sometime, put a, 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 a line in the sand and look in the mirror and say, I won't be a punk anymore. Stop being punked by these by this system. And this is what I think is so, so important for all of us to do individually and collectively. Next article, got this one from Press TV, which is a Iranian publication. My commentary is, how many nations are in Syria fighting now? Question. How many nations are in Syria fighting now? tells me WW3 has already started in earnest. There's multiple nations in Syria fighting right now. Here it goes. Press TV. Turkey fires back at U.S.-backed Kurds in Syria. The Turkish military claimed it fired back at U.S.-backed uh, Kurdish militants after targeting the anti-Damascus militants in support in Syria. It said on Wednesday that the Turkish forces has retaliated with artillery fire and destroyed targets belonging to the, Kur- the Kurdish People Protection Unit, YPG, overnight. So uh, and one thing I was going to tell you yesterday, that Turkey has assembled its military on the border of Syria, so I expect them to reinvade and go back into Syria, and then lo and behold, they did it last night. And I just happened because I, the, the power went out. I didn't get to get it to you. But these things are building. There's multiple, multiple nations in Syria fighting. Why is that? Whenever you have multiple, multiple nations fighting one side, proxy wars that, that are turning into all-out confrontations, this is you have the U.S., you have Israel, you have U.S. coalition, you got uh, Russia, you got Turkey, you got uh, the Iranians, you got China and somewhat. You have who else? It's just so many. That tells you is multi is is multi nation is multinational uh, militaries that are there. That's because that tells you that there is a war and there's split on different sides. So and it's only going to grow. Check out that article. Next article, L.A. Ramon posted this was Venezuelan voice. Venezuelan voice, the real life story behind the the protest. Check out that article. Next article, I posted this one from Strategic Culture. U.S. threatens Syria again, treading on the path of war, trending on the path of war. Check out that article uh, in itself. Um, real, well, I made a mistake. Okay, here we go. Let me go back to, to Ramon's, uh, L.A. Ramon's um, post. And this one came from... Uh, I R I N news dot com dot com dot org. Excuse me. And it says Venezuelans have taken to the streets in the tens of thousands over the past weeks in anti-government protests that have left at least 43 demonstrators dead and hundreds injured. They show no sign of abating. Check out that uh, article. So just wanted to read that caption that was there. Also, uh, this one I posted from Strategic Culture. U.S. threatens Syria again. Trending on the path of war. Here and there, 
there are signs that the U.S. is planning a large-scale military operation in Syria. You think? Really? All right. Anyway. The plan includes combat operations against the Syrian army and its allies. Stop right there. The U.S. is planning. Plans include combat operations against the Syrian army and its allies. Who are the Syrians allies? Russia, China, and Iran. Going to happen, for those of you that's been listening to Tando Radio Show, you know that we've been trying to and earnestly get you prepared for that because that is definitely here and on the horizon. And this is going to affect our community and our families and you individually so, so much, much more than what we can even express. But it is here and is going to, I just want you to be as prepared as possible. Next one, uh, I posted this one from Press TV. Russia warns U.S. against move this unilateral uh, acts on Syria. The Russian has cautioned the U.S. against any unilateral actions in Syria after Washington's claim Damascus has been preparing for a chemical attack on Wednesday. Russian foreign diplomat, Russian's uh, deputy foreign ministry assured that Syrian uh, army troops pose no threat to U.S. forces. Boy, this is, this is such a setup. And you think about it. If you're Assad, what reason in the world would you ever use chemical weapons when you already got Russia, China, and Iran having to defend you? Because if they don't defend you, that means they going down next. They must defend you. So who would want this chem? Somebody wants to get into a major war and have a reason that they can spread and actually get the overall public support for. This is propaganda, ladies and gentlemen. So who gains from the chemical attacks? Syria never does. In no way and no how. So check out that. Next article. I got this one from Russia... uh, Russia Today International. Liberty laws. Americans increasingly unhappy with the level of freedom. Survey says Americans often referred to as the land of the free. For who? America is the land. Uh, this this corporation is has personal liberties for those that are under the agreement, the contract, those that are have vested interest in the Corporation of America, they do give those individuals privileges. Just because you're born here does not make you a part of that contractual agreement. And most of us don't know that. This is why this seminar this weekend is so, so important. So important. So check out that article. Oh, uh, the, the uh, sub of this uh, uh, article is America is often referred to as the land of the free, but this, but but as citizens prepare to celebrate the Fourth of J- July, their, their satis- satisfaction with the country's freedom is significantly lower than it was a decade ago. So this was by a gallant poll. Check out that article. Next one article I posted this one from South China Morning Post. China launches Asia's biggest, most advanced warship. China, China launched what it calls the most advanced, largest warship in Asia on Wednesday, billing it as a major step forward in the modernization of its navy. Check out that article. Next article in. This one is, this one didn't come up. Raj posted this one. This one comes in from irinnews.org. A real crisis, North Korea, not yet. Excuse me. Okay, here it goes. It just pulled up. Okay, here we go. The inside story on emergencies. I guess this is, uh, check out this article. It says, the real crisis in North Korea is not the one you've been hearing about. Check out that article that Roz has posted there. I had to pull it up because it didn't show up. Um, 
in the drop. Okay, next one from the same publication. Um, L.A. Ramon. Oh, that was L.A. Ramon who posted that one. Sorry about that one. L.A. Ramon posted that one. And then L.A. Ramon posted this one as well. We can honor the sacrifices of our troops by deploying more women peacekeepers. Earlier this year, 29th May, marks the International Day of UN Peace in remembrance of more than 3,500 people who have lost their lives in peacekeeping operations over the UN 70-year history. Let me just stop this here. The UN in peacekeeping is an oxymoron, total oxymoron. So, But check out this article, real good article uh, that L.A. Ramon posted there. Now, this is the first article that Rise posted. This one came from AP News. Intel report, Kremlin sees U.S. urging regime change in Russia. Boy, that ain't going to work. <laughs> Kremlin leaders are convinced America is intending on regime change in Russia, a fear that is feeding rising tensions and military competition between the former Cold War foe. The Pentagon intelligence arm has assessed the, un the unclassified report by the Defense Intelligence Agency, known as the DIA, which will... Uh, be publicly released later Wednesday, portraying Russia as increasingly uh, weary of the U.S. United States. Check out that article. Next article, Rise posted, posted this one. It didn't come up well, um, so I got to pull this up. Colored smoke fireworks subject to recall in four states. These colored smoke fireworks are being recalled because they can explode. Check out that article, and they are, for those of you, I don't know why you would, but hey, for those of you, the TNT, red, white, and blue smoke fireworks are intended to emit colored smoke, not explode. Man, don't be fooling with this type of stuff. Um, this this what you this what gets you hurt doing stuff that you ain't got no business engaging in. So check out that article uh, for those of you that indulge in that type of activity. Next article, my man Rise posted this one. This is him from Business Insider, and it says. And this is what I we've been talking about, uh, you know, for for a while now, for two years now. The United States will be unrecognizable by the end of this century. Look like somebody at Business Insider have been listening to Tando Radio Show. You're right because the U.S. will no longer be the United States. It will be the U.T.S. Untied States of America. So here we go. Check out that uh, article. Very very good uh, article but it was it was actually talking about something else but I just spun it to, to what I wanted to spin it to check out that article next article Rise posted this one from the Guardian and it says a sniper kill shot consistent with Canada's non-combat role in Iraq check out that uh, article next article Rise posted this one this comes from meshable.com uh, we only have three years left to turn the corner on global warming the next three years will effectively decide the fate of our planet climate. This is a stark message for, of a new commentary on the journal. Check out that article. And I would just tell you that's because man is doing things to this itself. Has nothing. This is all a shams and a charade, but you need to know what's really going on. The sun don't shine no more. We're going to have that come up on uh, Thursday uh, tomorrow. That is going to be part. We're going to finish that out. So check out that tomorrow. So next article, Rise posted this one. And this one comes from the LATime.com. As the world focuses on its nuclear ambitions, North Korea develops another weapon, drones. Check out that article. Got to get moving so we can hurry up. Next article from The Guardian, Rise posted this one. Duarte tells troops fighting militia, uh, militants not to worry about civilian death. This is what all of these, I tell you, all of these celebrity figurehead politician people are all political serial killers all of them then all of them that's just what they do check out that article next article from lying like a fox news rise posted this one drone and i'm gonna tell you this is so true i, I seen it firsthand in in california and this is so so true drone impedes arizona firefighting efforts to battle wildfire man is that's so true um there, there are major we we showed this in um a year and a half ago, in 2015, wow, two years ago, there was a, a big, big fire in um, California um, off the, the uh, 15 freeway. And 
down towards Victorville and everything. And this fire was so big, it just overtook the freeway and start, and people had to get out of their cars and start running. It looked like, you know, something out of a movie set. And what happened that day was that so many people put their drones up and was actually hampering the overall firefighting uh, effects because they flooded the area with drones because everybody wanted a drone shot. So check out that article. Next article, and this is going to be, um, got to hurry up here. Uh, this comes from in a, in a, uh, gadget dot um and this one u.s hit by cyber attack that targeted the ukraine and russia and this is the other article um rise great uh, post thank you brother for that one good good one next article last one this one rise posted from ap news how artificial intelligence is taking over ransomware artificial ai intelligence is taking over pretty much everything So definitely, definitely great articles. So that what was in the news, and we're going to get to Brother Davis, so we don't want to take up too much time from his show on Wise Wednesday. So if you'd like to get in on the conversation, give Brother Davis a call, 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025, then hit star star. We will see uh, see you in queue. I will be back and forth on the board. I will be listening but I won't be on the board the uh, whole time. So if you do call in, hit star, star, unmute yourself, and just, you know, just say excuse me a little bit, and, and then uh, we'll hear you, and Brother Davis will hear you and go right to you for your question or comment. And remember, a dialogue is much more important than a monologue. When we engage, we get so much more. So that's what we all should be doing. What's up, Strategic Melanin? Much love, much respect uh, to you. L- always Glad to see you in queue, uh, in the chat, and just you being you. Okay, so we're going to um, go ahead and get into Brother Davis whenever you're ready, my friend, if you would unmute yourself, and we will pass over to Wise Wednesday, and we're all looking forward to that. Here's Brother Davis. Much love, big love, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to Wise Wednesdays with Brother Davis. And I'm going to tell you, it's going to be a serious, serious show tonight. And the reason why I'm saying it's going to be a serious, serious show tonight is because I'm going to give you some actual connections that you will make to see your power. That's a powerful statement. I had to say that several times when I was writing it down. And the reason (laughs) being is because we don't really see how we add to the universe. And the reason why is because we've been taught by Westernism. Now, Westernism always has an intent. Now, what do I mean when I say Westernism always has an intent? How many times have you heard people say, oh, yeah, that brother, that brother got some knowledge, or, or that sister got some knowledge. They know what they're talking about. But yet, you don't. You know why? Because of Westernism teaches you several avenues of knowledge. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. Westernism has a way of giving you one impression when another is going on. Sadly enough, a lot of us sit back and scratch our heads because we're still trying to figure out what makes what they say knowledgeable. So let me break down some basic things first. First, there's theoretical knowledge. Theoretical knowledge is a subject of knowledge, which is the principle of the idea, the subject, rather than the way the principles are put in practice, the knowledge gathers all of the books of the information, and it allows you to apply it in a theoretical way. Okay, now what does that mean? So say a person wants to drive a car, but they don't and never experienced driving a car, but they got the book, they got the manual. So theoretically, they know how to drive the car, but have they actually drove it? No. So that is theoretical knowledge. Then there is practical knowledge. Now what is practical knowledge? Practical knowledge is when somebody has taken a specific practice and they have done this so much and so repetitiously that they can literally tell you what they're doing and not be doing it, and you will have somewhat of an understanding of what they're saying. See, and what is interesting about that is, say, we're talking about plumbing, and they tell you you need to read the schematic. Well, using practical knowledge, they can read a schematic of the application that they're applying. That's practical knowledge. Now, then there's the concept of empirical knowledge. Now, I know some people, they sit back and say empirical knowledge. Wow, that, I mean, that, that, 
literally insinuates something deep. But literally, empirical evidence, also known as sense experience, and pick that up, sense experience, is the knowledge of source that a knowledge has been picked up through sense. So if you smell, uh, taste, these are all senses. So this knowledge deals with how they operate it. And see, what's unique about that is that there is a commonality, and that means that there is a subject matter and there is a specific result. And they, through this process, they can take that subject matter and they can find the result because it may have to do with, hmm, the biscuits taste so good. I knew they would because I could smell them. You see what I'm saying? So the, ad, the, the objectivity hasn't, actually hasn't changed because in reality, what the person is conveying is the idea of the biscuit. So now I'm trying to give you an understanding of these knowledges because when people walk up to you and say, oh, yeah, this person's knowledgeable, you are now coming from a base of what kind of knowledge do they have. Then there is what's called semantic knowledge. Now, what is semantic knowledge? Somatic knowledge is knowledge that uses a specific scheme or a uh, action that is already put out as a play. Now, what is somatic knowledge? Take a puzzle. A puzzle is already designed, but you get it in pieces. So as you begin to apply these pieces, you systematically you're thinking in terms of the shape of the piece in order to find the place. So you look at the shape of the piece, and then you match the picture to the colors. Okay, now the reason why I wanted you to have a basic understanding of knowledge is on that level is so that when people come to you and say, blah, 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 and they seem to be knowledgeable, well, so what kind of knowledge is it? A lot of people don't know what kind of knowledge you're speaking of. And those who do are capable of conveying it in a way which you could understand. What we're talking about tonight, hold on to your seats, is called universal knowledge. What is unique about universal knowledge is that it is the same to every aspect of the universe. Let's start out with the atom. Okay, the atom literally has a nucleus. It has a nucleus, a proton, and a neutron. And this can be expanded in many different ways. Why? Because the atom is the center, but traveling around it is actually the power grid. Now, what is the power grid? The power grid is the electron that is moving around the positive proton. See, this is what gives substance. There is a unseen matter there, which is considered to be a source of gravity or a gravitational pull. But now this matter has a fluctuation. And that fluctuation, science used to call space. But to give you a, a more defined aspect of it, modern physics has appeared to prove that the theories of physics have been transformed from its original concept. Science is discovering in the universe is infinite in all directions. Both the atom, the macro, and the planetary, I mean, atom, the micro, and the planetary level, which is the macro level, it is also finding that we call matter that is not what it appears to be. In fact, studies suggested 99.9% of empty space surrounding an idea or information or a thought is in actuality consciousness. Contrary to the popular belief, quantum physics have found that they cannot explain what matter is nor what holds it together. The remaining 1% of matter, which appears to be invisible, is also theorized by quantum physics as or to be optical illusion. Now, that is real deep. I'm going to tell you why that's deep. Because everything is made up of atoms. You think about that now. Because I'm about to take you on a serious, serious trip. Okay, in our educational system, they have so many indoctrinations that they're not really focusing on need. They're focusing on special interest groups. Well, we focus on need, then we begin to be responsible to self. So what is need? 
Well, perfect example is, and this may be a little touchy for some parents, but I want you to get the understanding of why I'm using this approach. Our schools now in the fourth grade are starting to teach about sexuality. Why teach sexuality? What is the purpose of a four-year-old understanding their sexuality before they realize the dominancy of their sex? And the reason why I say that is because, once again, what we should be doing is teaching them the practical application of understanding. What is that? What is the difference in sex and reproduction? What is a great difference? But instead of them teaching them the nomenclature of a man and the nomenclature of a woman so that they can begin to understand and identify with, they're teaching them something that's totally arbitrary to the truth. Why? Because they want to change their character. Let's bring it back to self again. Self is the identification of the reproductive cycles in a man and a woman. Now, I'm not going to go into a great degree of detail of what they are because I do think that is a parent's right to be able to cross that bridge with their child when they see fit because some children mature faster than others. But what is so unique about this is what is universal is the seed process. Now, the seed process is the great gift that women have. That's why they are considered to be the ultimate energy. Women are born with eggs okay now what's so unique about that is that the egg process literally ensures the existence of humanity what is humanity humanity is that us people okay now let's look at it in a universal sense animals have the same process plants have the same process. They need to start with a seed or an egg. Isn't that unique that the universe and all it entails has a level of consciousness that takes place in every form of reproduction? Now, here's what's so unique about that. No other uh, species on the earth can literally tap in to that so-called consciousness or black matter. Why? Because they don't have the ability to rationalize. They don't have the ability to think. They have the ability to socialize. Why do they have the ability to socialize? Because literally they live in communities that we cannot identify because we are not that species. That's it. But now understand this. They do have a vibration. Interesting. So that means that as that atom is moving through their body, it is tapping into a universal law. All living things have a vibration. Regardless of what level you believe on or you're living on, there's still a vibration at work. What is this vibration? Well, the Chinese call it qi. The, uh, should I say we call it a life force. Why do we call it a life force? Because we cannot exist without it. No living thing can exist without it. Even plants have a life force. And you see what's unique about this is Westernism doesn't teach you this. You know why? Because they have a great fear. And that great fear is that you can achieve with your consciousness something they cannot achieve with their consciousness. And there's a reason for that, and we'll go into that later on. But I wanted to point that out to you first. So now let me show you your connection. Do you realize that the closest that you can get to actually feeling as God is through the act of sexual intercourse? Because it is designed so that you can reproduce yourself. Think about that for a minute. This gift is so unique in its greatness that you can reproduce yourself. So would it be better for our children to be able to understand that aspect before getting into understanding the characteristics of other, shall we say, choices or moral decisions that will be faced be stole upon them later. So let's look to the, at the uniqueness of this process. 
You see, there has to be an intercourse. Why? Because you possess a seed that needs to be fertilized. And see, in this fertilization process, it is what was always considered sacred. But Westernism teaches that the destruction of sacredness,ity what sacred, what those things that are sacred, are being destroyed now. That's why our children look at sex with such a primitive frame of mind. That's why society teaches them through music, uh, translation, and books that sex is now a recreation where it was actually a part of your spiritual practice, a birthright. But see, they have made it to you to be something it is not. Why? Because Westernism is designed to destroy what is true in the universe. And the reason being is because it is corruptive. Uh, is there a question? Is there somebody in the queue? Yes, uh, uh, Brother Davis, peace, peace. Uh, I, w- peace. I just was... Uh, just taken back by what you were saying because I was thinking about this earlier today. Um, when you talk about the conception of this 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 this, this being, this uh, seminal fluid that comes from the brain of the man travels down his spine into his his testes and uh, is deposited into his into the female. Uh, most people don't understand how sacred that is. That conceptualization is from a thought, a thought that becomes action that manifests with a being coming into, into fruition. This being is, the inception is the soul fire that the symbol fluid connects the spark to the egg of the female. It's really, really deep when I, you know, I think about these kind of things all the time because I do a lot of reading in, in our sacredness. People don't under, understand what's sacred as you're saying. They think sex is a game, but sex is a manifestation of souls because you're playing with Great sexual content. energy. Yes, sir. Great content, with sexual brother. Energy. Great content. Yes, sir. That's how sacred it is. But we've been taught to think that that sex is profane. So we do things with that sex that's not supposed to be done. And we create other beings with this energy. That's a whole other conversation. I'm going to let you keep continue because I don't want to take you off track. Peace, man. Great thought, man. Peace. Peace, brother. Excellent, excellent content, brother. And listen, whenever you want to add, do, do jump in. When he was talking, he was literally giving you what I where I was taking you about your life force. You see, when you are literally uh, injecting your sperm into this egg through this natural process, because your sperm has to have a certain degree of essence and fortitude in order to get to the egg. Once it gets to the egg, it literally forms a bond around the egg to penetrate it. What that is happening there is your life force is embracing the necessity of the process. Now, here's another unique side point. Women only have female eggs. That is right. There has to be a chromosome X injected to the egg in order for it to be a male. So for those of you who think that all women have both male and female eggs, no, they don't. But the reason why I'm coming to you from this level of content, hey, Brother Bragg, did you want to mute for us, man? If you can mute for us, because we hear your dog barking in the back. One of the reasons why I'm coming to you from this aspect is that I want you to see the permanency of your connection to what is considered the universal consciousness that science has already determined is black matter. So when you operate and grow through a conscious level of growth, now what is a conscious level of growth? The meditation I've been talking to you about, yogas, uh, tai chi, anything that helps you combine mind, body, and soul. Now what does that mean? That means that your mind and your body and your spirit are on one accord. So there are many ways that you can achieve this. Uh, one of the things that I've always did in my meditation was work on how I can include the sound vibration uh, uh, dynamic. Why? Because if you noticed last week, I started to show off with sounds of unique connections, universal connection. The so-called Aum, Adam, Mio. See, 
all of these are sounds that literally open your communication charge to take charge. Why do you take charge? Because now you're beginning to communicate with that kind that will work in your behalf so that you don't become victimized by the teachings of Westernism that tries to get you to believe that these things don't occur when they do. And what's so unique about that is that anybody who has a stage of practice, what is a stage of practice? It's a discipline that will allow you to bring self in harmony with spirit. And the unique thing about that is that the first thing you will find is that there is a place of peace in which you can work from, but if you never experienced it, you can never go there. And a lot of people think, well, just because I feel that way and I go into a state of meditation, I have a right to get there. No, you don't. Because remember what I said, it's a discipline. And just as you are disciplined to that particular practice, then that practice can build in you the vessel, what you need to be able to tap into the consciousness of the cosmology in which you live, which is the universe itself. One of the unique things about it is that once you've been there, there's nothing like it. Because there are states of peace that once you begin to experience, you will miss. Why would you miss them? Because in this life, we are put in the capsule of time and space. In the conscious realm, you don't have the limits of time and space. See, one of the things that is unique about meditation is that you sustain your will. Where when you go to sleep and you're in a dream state, you literally have no will. That's why you ever have a dream where you're falling and you felt like you just victimized? Well, that doesn't happen in states of meditation because your will is in control. And here's one of the unique things about it going into the meditation. Because you are a part of a greater connection through the DNA of the universe, and let me repeat that. You are part of the greater connection of the universe. Your ancestors are already there. They're there on different levels because once you attain a certain level and you continue your practice, you don't stay there. You elevate. And as you elevate, you begin to get more and more humble, more and more grateful, because you begin to realize and see things from different perspectives. So what you're doing is living that aspect of consciousness that you are attaining through your spiritual practice. When I first started talking about meditation, I told you that I used my art to order to dump my system. What do I mean? I had to dump the Western teachings that are hindering me from being able to grow beyond it. So I tried to get away from things like the, the, the TV, the influences of uh, the radio. I tried to throw myself more into books that are allowing me to understand how that connection is, how what my life force should mean to me when it comes to how it's being directed out of me. And that direction may come through words because, remember, the most, the most spiritual aspect is through intercourse. But when we interact, and you've heard me use the, total, use, a, use the term, we become the examples for our children, that is another way in which we are literally operating in that secret um, level of consciousness that we're starting to tap into because there are times when you're going to get gifts of information that are just going to take you totally away from where you are and put you in an understanding of how to reach that knowledge and you'll, you'll find yourself even after you come out of your state of trance where you're starting to seek now on a different level because now you've been exposed to something that you couldn't be exposed to unless you train yourself 
through one of these methods to open the door to your knowledge base. They're for everybody. One of the things about the universal laws is they're the same for everyone. Now, when I say the same for everyone, that means that you have the ability to access them. Will you or not? That's your choice. But when you do, you're going to realize how much of your power you give away. You give away power through suggestion. You give away power through relationship. You give away power through camaraderie. You give away power through family. You give away power to the TV, to the radio, to, to because we're taught that. That's what programming is about. Okay, listen, we're going, Gary, to go to a break. It's Brother Davis on a Wise Wednesday. Pick up your phones. I got a lot of information for you, and I want to lay it out there. We'll be right back. Since 2008, providing new black media for the masses. Okay, this is Brother Davis, and we are back. And I wanted to touch on something real quick because I want you to really understand how how vast this is. Modern science has now based scientific evidence postulated an existence of substance called black matter, which is described as an unseen, unfelt substance that makes up 99% of the universe. That means that not only is the world one interrelated mass, but that is part of a greater mass called the universe. So that means that all of that dark matter that you see out of there is connected to you. That means that all of that energy that you have the ability to tap into, you have been taught to ignore. See, we have a lot of work to do when it looks, when we look at ourselves as a society. And the reason being is because we've allowed the wolf to control the flow of the hens. Or should I say allow the wolf to control the flow of the sheep. But as the sheep begin to wake up, they are no longer sheep now. They're in a transformation process. And one thing about that transformation process, due to the level of spiritual content that they have or they tap into, they can evolve in that transformation process. So you become a greater danger now. Why? Because they don't know to what level you can evolve. Now, let me give you just some perspectives, okay? Now, don't think in terms of limited possibility because you always hear me say I believe I can achieve the impossible and in order to believe that you can achieve the impossible you must perceive that whatever the impossible is you can achieve it you see that's what's so unique about opening yourself up to a greater spiritual level because now you're no longer uh, confined on this time space continuum because as you begin to develop you will forget about it only times when it really hits me is when I pay attention to what's going on around me. And the reason why I have to do that is because, just like everybody else, I'm in it, but not of it. But we have to understand what that means by practicing something that will take us away from it to the degree that we can control our flow so we can come and go. And when I go into a state of meditation, I literally leave this body. 
Do I stop the operation of it? No, because I have taught myself through the teachings, and I don't limit myself to teachings. I study uh, spirituality. I study. Um, uh, I study metaphysics. I study martial arts. I study the body. I understand what the five element theory is. I understand what the seven element theory is. And see, these are things that deal with the body and knowing thyself. And the reason why is because your heart, just to give you an example, your heart has to beat. So your heart is actually fire because it must stay warm. It must keep going, okay? So that fire needs something to keep it going. What is that? Oxygen. So your lungs, the way you breathe, sustains the quality of the heart, okay? Every system in the five elements is built on a positive regeneration or an imbalance to cause deterioration. And that's where we literally disconnect. Because, see, we fail to realize that we are in control of this. And how we're exercised against us is when we're advertised to and we go out and we spend our money on non-nutritious food or GMO food because they're kind, constantly running the illusion that it's healthy for us. And unless we do our own due diligence so that we could show ourselves approved to self, understand how I said that, show ourselves approved to self, then will we wake up and begin to be the teachers of our children because when you go out and you come home and you take and you open up a box and you stick dinner into the oven and it required no preparation for you, all you know is what that box says. So that box might say um, Stouffer's macaroni and cheese, okay? But now you put that in front of your children and they say, hmm, tastes so good, but you don't realize later on the night, oh, wow, the daughter can't go to the bathroom and the other child feels bloated and you're getting headaches. And you know what? You can't understand this. That's because you gave away your dynamic of what is in your control. And that's your ability to know. How do you control that? It's very simple. You must take an operative part in the food process. Don't rely on somebody like Stolfers to design what is best for your child. One of the reasons why my wife and I had changed our diet was because we began to realize how much of the control that we were giving away. And we wanted to take that control back. Now, in taking that control back, it empowered us to learn about food. Now, you have to understand the dynamic here because now I'm meditating, and in your meditation, you will be guarded. What is that? That means your ancestors will protect you. They will expose you, but they will also protect you. How? Because they are connected to the cosmology of the universe. They don't want to see harm to you. They want you to grow. Because as you grow, they can expose the secrets. Now, the universe has secrets. Actually, Africans have secrets. Now, why do Africans have secrets? Because when Africa was invaded, there was many, many of the elders who possessed spiritually talents that they could not expose to people because they were not a part of the understanding of the, physiolo the, the physiology of the tribe. Okay, so when white people came over there, they were thinking from the terms aspect of words. But the tribe operated on the aspect of sound. So they would take a sound like, um, and Europeans would hear that and say, well, I guess they're hungry over there. They're over there hollering or whining. But that's because they had no basic understanding of tribal theory. And that's why they came up with the concept of Egyptologists, one who could interpret what they thought was going on. But that way they can control the truth. You see, one thing that's unique about us as a people is that sound has always played an important role in every aspect of our lives because we are God-connected, and sound and vibration is what literally brought the world into being. 
And I know you've heard the stories about uh, uh, being spoken into being. Well, in reality, there was no speaking. That was the terminology used by them. That's the Western terminology. They teach you. But really, it wasn't. It was a sound that was given out of the nun. And I'm taking you into another level, so I'm going to leave it right there. But I want you to understand that it's sound that was activated in order for us to be able to be here today. Now, what is so unique about that is because sound is so universal, we fail to realize the principles that was behind sound. So let me give you a brief understanding. Sound teaches. Sound literally allows you to feel it. Sound touches your emotion. So when it, all of these things are happening, it's literally having an effect on you. You see, that's why we must really rid our society of negative rap. Understand how I said that? I didn't say rid our society of rap. I said negative rap. Because, see, before rap was the way it is, there was the last poets. And the last poets actually was rap. But they were doing poetry to music, and it was always uplifting. The first rappers, when they came out, that rap was positive rap, and it was uplifting. You see what I'm saying? So when those people who knew the secrets of the African tradition realized the power of the music, they altered it. Yes, they hijacked it. And they do that with everything when they see it being a positive source. Sidebar. Why do you think that Bill Cosby was the focus of so many women coming out of the woodwork at such a late state in his life? and accusing him of rape. Now, I'm not saying, by no means, don't get offended by this, I'm not saying that he didn't do something. But I am saying this. They, he was targeted for a number of different reasons. Now, if you want me to give you some, I'm going to give you two that I know off the top of my head. Bill Cosby introduced the white world to the truth of Egyptology. And he was trying to open up the eyes of black people. But white people had begun at that point to realize there had to be a greater connection that they overseen in order for this man to come across with this much power in a video and such a show. I think the, the, the whole thing might have been five minutes long. But for a child looking, it was very powerful. So when they started looking at his life, then they looked at his cartoon show. His cartoon show was moralistic based. If you ever remember, hey, 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 every cartoon had a moral theme to it. And it was always about uplifting and building. Let's move forward. How about different, different world? Remember the different world? No, wait, first, it was the Huxable. Bill Cosby show with the Huxables. A positive male and a positive female leading a family of positive children. Even the son, the interactions of the dad and the son represented the father-child example. And see, we failed to look at this here on a spiritual or a metaphysical level because literally we are being bombarded with programming that's taking us away. It's keeping our mind agitated so that we don't have a chance to focus on the things that really are changing. But do you know, and you can do your own due diligence on this also, when Bill Cosby and the Huxtables was on, they introduced a sideshow called Different World. More black children were going to college based on those two shows than at any other time in history. Until now. But don't take my word for it. Do your own due diligence. Because of the power that was being projected through the tools of sound and visibility. Now, they have taken him and literally tried to castrate him more or less they tried to castrate the legacy that he put in place and here's what's so unique about that he's 80 years old if they had serious substance they would have did this a long time ago but he felt that he could do something that no white person in power or so that I say that the lead group thought that he should even think on that level he wanted to buy NBC do you realize if he would have bought a major network with the philosophies that he's already been giving to black people through his shows, 
what what he could do to the world. And understand this here, that the world is 85% people of color. So by the time everything that he's ever did went into different languages, and it, it, it does. They, they, they literally did it in Spanish, they did it in French, they did it in Portuguese, because it was all around the world. This became a power tool that they overlooked. So then when it came to what's happening now, they're just trying to dismantle him mentally because he was a black man that thought he had enough, or should I say, respectability to buy a major television network. You think about that for a while. Now let me get back to the ninth class, I mean the ninth uh, lesson. One of the main things I'm beginning to, I want you to really see it's how you are connected to the universe, how you can tap into some of the teachings, the spiritual teachings, that would allow you to open doors that you have not gone through before and expose you to things that will put you in a state of perpetual growth. Now, here's what's unique about a state of perpetual growth. Everybody's family has a gift. Some of them know what it is. Some of them don't. That's just the nature of things. And the reason why is because when Africa was invaded, they killed millions now let me tell you why they killed millions they killed millions because they Africans have a, had a philosophy of Ma'at and Ma'at had a respect for life so therefore when there was a confrontation it was more of a uh, bull session than literally physical elimination of life these people came in with an entirely different concept because they had no compassion for life so this literally devastated the teachings of Africans because they just didn't see the elimination of life so subconsciously. See, these people kill indiscriminately in a mass numbers. And don't, look, I'm telling you, look at, your, look at their history. It speaks for itself. So when you come in to a philosophy of peace, growth, prosperity, the harmony, with the most devastating uh, aspect of destruction, you throw a shock wave that literally encompasses a whole country. Now, there were thousands and thousands of wars, and there were thousands and thousands of battles and skirmishes because black people don't just give in. This is programming now. They, they've actually programmed a lot of the backbone out of the black community. And why? Because they made people think, why fight it? And you know you're going to die. And you see, black people don't want that because it's white fear. As our tribal brothers and sisters die, you think, what? No, that ain't happening. See, it's a difference when you're being programmed 24-7, but it's even a greater difference when you're submitting to that program. We are beginning to wake up, but we're waking up in such small numbers that we don't realize what we're losing. We are, lo we are the curators of the earth, and we are about to lose it. Why? Because we have not tapped into those things that would empower us to be able to take it back. That's why you see all of these things that are focused on our destruction. Because when we really begin to understand the importance of collaboration, let me give you an idea. You think of 50 people in a room meditating on one thing, and then you think of that one person who has the ability to wield the power of their thought. Yeah, it's scary to them. It is scary to them, and you know what? They are terrified. And they terrify each other. You know why? Because they don't want them to want to be able to tap in to just the peace that is beyond all understanding. Because if they tapped into the peace that is beyond all understanding, then they begin to realize how destructive their species is and what their species is doing to the normal universal flow. 
You see it. You see Monsanto's. They make seedless vegetables and fruit now. Now, we know that all vegetables and fruit come from seeds. It's a life force. But they make seedless. That's perverting the universal law. They make artificial intelligence. And they give it to you in your hand so that if you got to do math, you no longer have to think. You could press buttons. See, they're telling you that it's uh, modern technology, but what it is doing, it is subduing your ability to be self-controlled. When you are in self-control, you can do the math on your head. Remember the time when everybody knew whoever loved one they wanted to call, they knew that number by heart? Matter of fact, I seen a post the other day. Can you remember your childhood telephone number? I remember mine. It's 2387352. I'm sorry I had a delay there because my wife's father's number is similar to ours. But it's just one of those things. And it was area code 717. And at that time, you didn't need area code. So do you see that although they're trying to market technology to you as being an improvement in the quality of life, what, it, what they're telling you, it's their ability to give us the control. And when you give us the control, we've already demonstrated what we're going to do. But guess what? Because you are so separated by the programming that us, our, our major corporations are doing to you, but we don't have to worry about you. We don't have to worry about you thinking there's going to be a leader because if it is, I'm killing. Instead of thinking, guess what? We're all leaders. If everybody took the initiative to be responsible for their own spiritual self and their own physical well self and awareness, you take the power away from them. You know why you take the power away from them? Because when it comes to a fast food restaurant and you're hungry, you say, you know what? Mm, I'll pass. They don't want you to pass. They want your money. Who are you to think independently about your health? Let alone be able to sustain a good quality of health because that means that another corporation don't make money. That's right. Why do you think for one minute they want you sick? To another corporation to make money and send you to another corporation and that corporation will take more of their resources and help make you sustain a quality of life until your time comes. Because they're you're planning on they're planning on your dying. When you take control of your life, and I'm gonna tell you this is from personal experience. When I eat live food, I'm alive. It has taste to it. The energy of the juices running through my mouth empower my taste buds to say, mmm. And then when it goes down, it's already told my body, look, it's, this is coming. It's good. And then my body starts to process and say, unnatural. I know where this goes. Okay. This control. So something but of that type of, of outlet. Uh, if you could do your own research. If you want more about the research, call me. I'll show you which way to point you in the right direction. But you can just Google it yourself. Because all these all these entities are in bed with each other, feeding each other and and, and paying each other off. Excellent. Thank you, darling. So there you go. Every time the door opens, every time a door closes, another door opens. And the reason why I'm, I'm trying to point this principle out to you is because they want you to think all of the doors are closed. That's why they have such... You realize they, they put millions of dollars in marketing different things to you? I mean, think about it. If they are, something new comes to the market, they pump thousands and thousands of dollars into it, and they don't really tell you the truth of what it's supposed to do. They tell you what they want you to, it, what they want you to think it does because they don't want you can take control. This is Brother Davis on the Wise Wednesday. Uh, we're coming up on a break. Is there anybody on the phone there, Scotty or Dave? But I'll tell you what, after the break, we're going to discuss some other None that I see, Brother Davis. Okay. And the reason why we're going to discuss open solution is because we have to empower you. We have to empower you so that you could see, and when you begin to see, then you will begin to operate in your communities. 
because see, we can't do this as a voice in the wilderness. This is Brother Davis on a Wise Wednesday. Be right back. Pick up your phones. Call me with your questions. And we're coming into the last part of the show. And it will be about solutions. Podcasts and live program scheduling, visit us on the web at blacktalkradionetwork.com. Okay, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. First of all, let's start off with the three second rule. What is the three second rule? You don't make a decision for at least three seconds, and then when you're not sure, say, Let me think about it. You know how people call you up on the phone with your work. Yo, we're going to go out to the club. We're going to have dinner and this and that. You know you're trying to peep your way down. You know you're trying to stay away from certain foods. You know you really want to be able to go home and fix your food so that you can stay on your course of action. Well, you would ordinarily say, okay, girl, well, what time are you going to do this? Next time, let's say 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Let me think about it. I'll call you back. Because, see, that way you could. Think about what is in your best interest. And when you think about what is in your best interest, that might not be what you want to do. Now, sometimes you want to hang out with the girls, and that's understandable. But it might not be in the plan the way you want it. See, you have to think in reference to your interests. You know, when you go into the stores like those uh, Sam's Clubs and they got all these foods around and they're smelling good and everything, oh, why don't you try this? 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. What's in it? Oh, I don't know. It's, it's a new problem, new product. Oh, well, that's nice. It smells good, but no thank you. You see how you utilize these things to your advantage. Uh, excuse me. Can, you, can I have your attention, please? 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Uh, no, I'm busy. Because you know how you go to a place and people put something in front of you. You might be in the mall and say, hey, would you like to win a vacation? Now, you know, when you put your information on there, their vacation is going to be the last thing of their concern. They're going to take that information and they're going to build a mailing list and they're going to sell it to anybody who wants it. But they're not going to tell you that. They're going to say, we're going to select one person to go for a three-day, four-night trip to the Bahamas and we'll pay for everything. Now, here's the catch. How, how are you going to know who it is? They ain't going to call you up and say, uh, Mr. Howard, we've received your app and your, your put into our contest, and, you know, you didn't win, but Sherry Thomas did across town, and she's going, and uh, she'll be on our page so that you could see her or hear her experience. No, they're not going to do that because it's a business. So we operate in a three-second rule for us to take back control. Yeah, my wife takes three minutes. Yeah, she says, well, you know, it's a different concept, but she does it for her purposes, and I do what I do for my purposes. And that's what you must do. You must do what works for you for your purposes. Because now a lot of times people will say, well, you know what, you know, I really want to change my life, but I don't know where to start. Well, what is it that you don't like about your life? Hello. you got to start asking yourself these yeah. questions. What do you want to implement that will help you get to where you want to go? And when you evaluate yourself, you empower yourself. You know why? Because you know what you can say to yourself? You know what? I thought about it. Nah, I don't really think I want to do that. I don't want to spend that money that way. I think what I'll do is I'll save that. I'll buy some silver. That way I can get something I can hold on to. And if it goes up in value, it's a plus for me. So you always have to think. On the level of growth. Because the children that are looking at you are your own. And guess what? That's another thing. Own them all. I've gone places and I see these honeys wearing these outfits and I'll say, excuse me, sister. I mean, I'm just curious. Do you feel a little cool in that? Some of them, yeah, my wife said, can you breathe? Some of them, it'd be cold outside and they'd be wearing something. You know they freeze them. But they're trying to be cute. You know why? Because they have egos that are out of control based on a program. 
And the sad part about it is some brothers be on the corner hanging out and everything, looking hard at each other. I was, I ease into the crowd. What's up, man? Yeah, that's saying they look around. Who's who, who's this? Is there someone in the queue? Okay, I be looking around saying, who is this? And now I'll be looking at young man, who are you? I'm Brother Davis, man. I live across the way. I'm passing through town. I used to live over here, man. So, yeah, who are you, man? You look like somebody's daughter or somebody's son. You see what I'm saying? You can always open up that door because guess what? They think you're scared of them. And if you are scared of them, don't show that. These are our kids. Go to somebody that you know you feel confident in their company. And then you make your play that way. But do start opening the door of conversation because we want to bring them in. We don't want them to think that we think they're crazy, regardless of how they behave, because we have an opportunity to make a transformation if we apply ourselves well in that circumstance. Because I'm going to tell you, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of children out here with great needs, but they don't even see themselves as being needed. You know why? Because their people have been supplying for them, or they have either had oversupply or no supply. They come in those two categories. And sometimes oversupply is even worse than no supply. You know why? Because then they think they're entitled to it. And the sad part about it is that what they think they're entitled to ain't even theirs. It may be somebody else's. That is the example of white supremacy in America today. And we have to literally tell our children, we are not them. And it's hard to do that when we go in every way. They walk out in the street, see people emulating them. So when they see somebody like me come down the street, and I got beads on, and I got jewelry on, and I look confident in myself, and the people say, yo, man, who are you? I'm King L. What? Let me tell you about us. Before you know it, they're eager to know more, even if it's about how the environment was when you were young, and how you evolved to see yourself as a king, and how you take control of your family. Because, see, that's the biggest problem. A lot of these young brothers, they've been bought up, and they're all saying the same thing. Oh, my dad's in jail. My dad's in jail. Guess what? Because he was in jail don't mean you got to be there. What? That's right. We got to take them out the box. Yo, brother, you have a greater talent than that. You know what? I think that you have a, a, a spirit in you that we could work with. And then some brothers are looking and saying, well, how can you see this and you don't even know me? Well, guess what? I don't have to know you to love you. How many times do you hear me say that? Do you think I don't say it to them on the street? And then they look at me all strange. You know why? Because they've been programmed. We must show them that we can break the program. We must show them that when you're thirsty, we can give you water. Is there someone in queue? Yes, yes, Brother Davis. Speak, it's brother. Come on. Now. This is Brother Bone. Okay, back. Yeah, it's, it's Jerry calling out of Chattanooga. How you doing, Brother Davis? Uh, it's always good, listening. Jerry. It's always. <laughs> That's good to hear. I was listening to Sister Davis talking about the uh, about the nutrients and stuff that we need to put in our systems, and I have something to uh, say speaking to what you're speaking about right now too. But I was I was wondering, uh, we already know that the body heals itself. I was thinking about I was talking to my mother, and we was talking about gray hairs because uh, as as everybody who listens to the show know I have five children I've been stressing a lot these last two years and, and we had this conversation on gray hairs and I was looking this information up and it said that the body the body stops producing melanin and that's why we have gray hairs is there any way that you could uh, replenish yourself to kind of act that particular uh, movement Absolutely. Now, I'll tell you what. Erica, uh, Brother Bo, talk about gray hairs. How do you generate gray hair? Hey, Brother. Yeah, well, what can I help you with? This is this is, this is is Jerry calling out of Chattanooga. I was... Uh, okay. I was talking about... Uh, I was listening to you speaking about the nutrients and how we fix certain things in our bodies. And I know that if we eat the right things, that our body regenerates itself. And I was uh right. I was telling Brother Davis that that me and my mother was talking about uh gray hairs 
and and I was saying everybody that that listens to the show knows that I always speak about my five children, uh, four daughters and and one son, and and I have been stressing a whole lot over these last two years. And I was wondering, is that I, I found out that when you when your body stop producing stop producing melanin, then that's that's what produces the gray hairs. Is there any way to counteract that? Uh, brother, I never heard that about the melanin, but I do know that gray hair. If you don't if you don't take in enough copper, you create it creates gray hair. Uh, co- uh, gray hair is a copper deficiency. And uh, you can get copper. It's hard to get copper from different foods you eat, so usually you have to supplement it. And as you become older, your body doesn't absorb so much copper. That's why older people get it as opposed to younger people. But even if young people get it, it might be a a hereditary deficiency in copper. But that's very important. Now, back in the day, remember back in the day, they used to cook in iron pellet. For uh, they they used to cook and cast iron skillets because that's yes, how ma'am. they got their iron. Not you know oh. their pure iron came from the um from the iron skillets. That's why people use them. People stopped using them and they become anemic. They became most of the nation became anemic because people stopped using cast iron because Teflon came out. And cast iron is easy to clean if you know how to do it. Now another thing yes. that they used to use was iron, uh, copper goblets. I remember my great grandmother. She always drank her water in a copper goblet, and it, she had a couple of them in the in the in the um cabinet. And she would only drink. I always noticed that she would only drink water. I never asked her, but had I asked her, would tap the brain of what was going on. But I tell you what, most of the people in our family did not have early gray hair. Now, when you become ninety and a hundred, eventually the gray hair, uh, you, you do be you do become gray. But really, if you still, even at that age, keep a high level of copper in your body, uh, you probably won't get as as gray a hair. Now, some people use copper bracelets. A lot of people wear copper uh, jewelry, and they wear copper bracelets. And one thing that the copper bracelets do is it helps reduce uh, inflammation. So right, right. I, know I would about suggest the magnetic properties. Yeah, yeah, I would suggest, and you can look it up, I would suggest you to put more copper in your diet. Supplement the copper, the copper, and you can um, use the copper goblet to drink out of. And they say it can, the more copper you put in your body, it will help to reduce. Now, one other thing I found out about copper and that gray hair, that more people, especially young, that get a lot of gray hair because of the copper deficiency is also deficient in other minerals. And that's a, a that's a setup to a stroke. That that's a setup to uh to a stroke. Yeah. And and I know somebody personally that when I found out this information, they mentioned three things. They mentioned uh copper deficiency which causes gray hair. They also mentioned varicose veins and they also mentioned people who take who watch their cholesterol, don't eat enough cholesterol because they're watching their cholesterol, that they are setting themselves up for a stroke. And I heard that information and about through about a about a month or so later a very close woman of me, like a like a um spiritual mother, she had a stroke. And guess what? I witnessed those three properties. I, I just didn't say I you know, I didn't even think to say anything to her until I realized she had a stroke and when I, I was I broke down in tears realizing that it was a it was nutritional deficiencies that she was having because the copper uh, the gray hair was was showing that, that there's not enough nutrients and minerals in her diet the varicose veins also in her legs also showed that uh it the body was working so hard. When those varicose okay. veins pop out in your legs and stuff, legs and usually it's in your legs, that means that the body is, if that's an indication, like a road map, that the body, that the heart is under a lot of stress. Then right. I know Phases. for a fact she was all, yes, mm-hmm. and I know Phases. for a fact she was okay. always, she was always watching her cholesterol. She was one that, you know, didn't, that she used margarine instead of butter and, you know, all the artificial stuff so that the, uh, so that she didn't get enough um, cholesterol in her body and she was taking cholesterol inhibitor of, of different medications. And Can recently, I ask a yes. 
when when I was when I was younger and my, my grandfather he died a little early. My grandmother just died just here recently. My grandfather used to eat whatever he wanted, what he grew up on because he grew up d- doing the sharecropping era. So he, he ate whatever he wanted, which was what he liked would be, uh, I know a lot of people say don't eat uh, pig fat and all of this stuff, but I noticed that he cooked in a whole lot of that stuff. And he has outlived, when he died, he outlived a lot of my uncles, his children. He outlived a lot of them because they had, they had 20 children all together. He outlived them. And and the ones who died early off, it was the uh, the health kit that they was uh, pushing. Right. The way that they yes. were and eating. It, and I noticed. And, and, I, I noticed that also. Yeah, brother, you are absolutely right because uh, there's nothing wrong with pigs. You know, I I used to eat pig all all the time. The reason I and I love pig feet and I love all. You know, I don't eat. I didn't, I never ate the um. Uh, chitlins, but I love bacon and all that. But one of the reasons why I don't eat those things now is because of the quality of pigs that are out here. Because they always did feed pigs garbage, even on a farm. Not garbage, garbage, but just the excess food that was waste from maybe their table. But now they straight up give ca- uh, uh, pigs garbage. They import other people and other places garbage just to feed the pigs. So that's one of the reasons why we don't eat pigs. But now, back in the day when your grandfather was alive, that was that was healthy pig. That that's the kind of you gonna eat a pig. That's the kind of pig to eat. The healthy, the better quality of pigs, because even their garbage back then was healthy. Because it was just it was just maybe too much, you know, the the skins of the potatoes and the skins of the apples, that type of thing. That's what the kids, the pigs ate. But people who are all gun ho on this pharmaceutical, because all those pharmaceuticals cause um, a side effects of some sort. And generally, you don't die of the, of the problem that you had. Most people die of the side effects that the pharmaceuticals give. And guess what? All pharmaceuticals, except by antibiotics, do not cure anything. They don't. All they do is, is, is kind of pacify the symptoms. The only, the only, um, um, a pharmaceutical that cures is antibiotic because that kills the germ, basically. Now, now we got all kind of germs that can't be killed only because they overdid the good germs that they could kill. So now we got germs we can't kill. But overall, on a pharmaceutical level, the only pharmaceutical that really cures anything is antibiotics because it kills the germ. All that other stuff for a hiatal hernia and high blood pressure, it, all that other stuff, everything else, and then there's thousands of things. It, it doesn't cure any of those symptoms, those problems. Usually if somebody got heart disease or something and they're, they're taking pharmaceuticals, then they get a side effect, and then that side effect is, is greater than the heart disease that they had in the beginning, and then they die of the side effect of from the pharmaceutical they forget all about the actual problem that they had in, to begin with they forget all about that because the symptoms and the and the acerbation of the pharmaceutical overrides the problem that they had in the beginning and if you sit down and think about some some conditions that you might have or other people have it's the same thing even with cancer Generally, the cancer don't kill the people. It's the chemotherapy and the different med- mes- methods of medications that people use that kill that kill them more than the cancer actually kills them. Exactly. <clears throat> yep. Well, thank you. Yes, I'm going to turn, turn it back over to Rich. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, listen, brother man, Davis. Did you see that done? Yes, brother. Oh, I'm sorry. You go ahead. I don't mean to interrupt. Okay, did you see? Did you see that? Did you see that dynamic there, in which you asked the question and I gave you someone who was more capable to answer that question than myself? Mm-hmm. See, that's what's called harmony. That literally is what love is about. They give us an, an impression of love that is really unnatural. And why is it unnatural? Because it's based on things outside of ourselves. When you are in harmony with somebody. You could be able to pick up on each other's vibe just like that, that quickly. And I wanted to demonstrate that because that is universal. That is where we come from, and we have to understand the importance of tapping in to those avenues so that we can flow that way. We come okay. You got, you got another question there, brother? Yes, sir. Real quick, uh, and okay. and and I knew 
because you talked about that last week. But my next question was, as far as you was talking about the, the younger generation, you are you are exactly right. Which, I, to you, I will be part of that generation, and and I do the same thing, approaching people with smiles, just just speaking, because the looks that they give is not necessarily a, a, a shut door. It's more of a warning that whatever comes next depending on what you say is how it is so when you come Absolutely. with that with that generosity of energy that you're giving off it it eases people because they want to be Absolutely. spoke to anyway I've, I've always noticed that we always want to be spoke to but we've been spoke down so much that whenever anybody's around we ready for that and we feel like we're going to settle that but with that being said I know you're running low uh, I appreciate your time not a problem brother listen before I go I wanted to point out several things first of all now you understand the importance of asking people what knowledge when they talk about oh, they, but this and that ask them what knowledge is that theoretic knowledge is that practical knowledge see these are the things uh, avenues of which westernism tries to keep cloak and dagger so that way they can control the narrative another thing I wanted to point out to you is that we are so connected to the universe that we don't realize that we are the prime of its source and if being the prime of its source, we could literally elevate ourselves through a discipline that would allow us to tap into a greater maturity in our real self. Now, our real self is that spiritual person that will eventually be blossom through that there uh, discipline practice. Another thing I want to point out to you is that you have all of the power, but you got to stop giving it away. Don't fall for the ads. Don't fall for the uh, uh, the marketing. Don't fall for the okie doke. Because guess what? Right now, Dirk don't sell you anything. The highest thing on the, le on the level for them to sell you is debt. So stay away from any major purchases until this dollar drops so you can see where you fit in. And lastly, this is our responsibility. This isn't something that someone's going to come in and save us from, no. And if you believe in the Savior, then look in that mirror, because you must empower yourself to be that Savior that you seek. This is Brother Davis and Sister Davis on a Wise Wednesday, and I always enjoy Excuse your company, me. baby. Uh, yes. Brother Davis, this is Max Parthas. Uh, greetings. Greetings, Brother Max. How are you? I'm all right. I just want to take a moment here on your program to say thank you for everything that you do for your support in the uh, abolitionist movement and specifically for the support that you have shown myself and my wife and our efforts to go to Ghana and make a difference there as well. Brother, I'm going to tell you, so I look forward to the day we can celebrate our meeting. And I say that to everybody who's in the struggle. So you give my best to Sister Rain and you tell her that the Davis family looks forward to that opportunity where we can come together. Indeed. Salute, my brother, and peace. Absolutely. Be blessed, everybody. It's Brother Davis on a Wise Wednesday. Dave, let me give it back to you because you really got some stuff to give out. And above all else, remember that we are the key to make change happen. Peace. Okay, Brother Davis, thank you so much. Great, great show, Brother Davis. Thank you, Sister Davis. Thank you, uh, Brother Bragg. Thank you, my man Jerry. Thank you for calling in, Brother. Just great, great questions. Great uh, you know, exchange. Max, thank you so much for calling in and giving your your salute to Brother Davis. Greatly, greatly appreciate you all. And, you know, great, great show. This is one of the shows that you definitely, it's, it's pretty much all of the, the Wise Wednesday shows, but this is definitely one that you want to uh, go back and hear over again uh, because it's, it's so much that was given that it, it needs to be reseeded and, and replanted in so many different ways because it's so, so true. Our harmonic Frequency changes everything, and so this is what we truly, truly need to do. And I love uh, the, the the part, you know, so many different parts, but the, the part that really stuck out to me the most was the the children that are watching you are our own. That is so, so true. So, with that being said, uh, we're going to get ready to get out of here. Uh, new Abolitions Radio is coming on right after Tando Radio Show. Brother Max is all ready to go. Uh, and so we're going to get ready to hand off to them. So much love, much respect. And we always say it's never goodbye. As always, we'll see you later. And before you ask for a fortune, make sure you give one away. Peace. We'll talk to you soon. Brother Bragg, chime us out. Peace, peace.